Having a workshop in an apartment means dust collection is a top priority. That's why I made this, an overarm dust collection for my table saw. It does a great job at helping suck up the dust that generally is all over the table, all over me, and all in the air. It's on a four bar linkage, which means adjusting it is really easy. And this allows me to adjust it to the perfect height of the workpiece. Getting that dust collection hood right down on top of the workpiece helps collect as much dust as possible. I even added an extra feature with a slide down panel that I use on cuts when I'm cutting just a sliver of wood away, or just the thickness of the blade. This is usually the dustiest cut you can make on the table saw, but with this extra shield, most of that dust goes up and out instead of all over the table and all over me. I don't always want to use this dust collector, sometimes it gets in the way, so I made it on a hinge, that way it can pivot out of the way when I don't want to use it, and put it back when I do. Let me show you how I made it. I'm going to start by making the portion that goes around the blade, and that has a wood core that is one inch thick, so this is two pieces of half inch plywood glued together, and I need to make two curved shapes to make that center piece, and I already drew these up in Fusion 360, so I'm just going to use that sketch to help me draw out the pattern on top of these two pieces of plywood. With the two wood core pieces done, I can now cut out the clear polycarbonate, which is going to go on either side of the wood core.
To accommodate different thicknesses of wood, I want this section to be able to travel up and down. And I'm gonna make a four bar linkage to do that. And so I've got a couple pieces of maple here and I'll go ahead and cut these into some linkages. These linkages are going to attach to another vertical piece here and I've already cut this to size and drilled the two holes. Actually I messed up on the top hole. I drilled it in the wrong spot but luckily I had a dowel so I just filled the hole and re-drilled the new one in the right spot. And now I can go ahead and assemble this and we can see how it's going to work. This horizontal cross piece is going to support this whole mechanism and it will branch over to the end of the table saw here where it will be attached to the side. I'm going to join this joint with a mortise and tenon so that it's nice and sturdy. So I'll go ahead and cut that next. With this arm support done, I'm ready to attach it to the saw, but I don't just want to fix it here permanently because there's going to be times when I'm not going to want to use this, like when I'm cutting really small pieces or using the crosscut sled. So I want this to be able to swing out of the way. So I'm going to build a hinged joint right here and I'll go ahead and show you what I'm thinking for that next. I'm just looking over this piece I just made and it's not very good because these gussets I got on this back piece crooked. If you see the gap 
of the gusset on the back plate here on the bottom versus the gap at the top. And that's gonna cause this whole arm structure to be crooked and it's not gonna be parallel to the table saw. So I should remake this back piece with new holes and refasten these gussets on there and be a little more careful to get them on there straight. Take two. I've got the dust arm clamped in place for now and I can go ahead and check the alignment. Luckily the alignment between the dust shield and the table saw is nice. If that was kicked off in the front or the rear, what I could do is come over to the post and cut this at a little bit of an angle and that would pivot the post to the front or to the back. But since we don't have to worry about that, we can come look at the alignment with the blade. And that's not perfect. You can see the front of this is too far to the left. So I need to straighten that out by twisting this whole gantry. And I'll do that when I set this post position with the screws from the bottom. I'll just shim it with a little bit of a twist to make sure that this gets lined up. And when that's lined up, I'll drive all the screws to set the position. Since I put the arm on a hinge, I need a way to lock it in place. So I cut this piece of wood at a bit of an angle, and that's gonna to attach to the main structure that rotates. And I'll just fasten that on with some nails and glue while it's being clamped. It was a little awkward with the angled part of it. And getting it clamped on there was a bit tricky. I didn't feel like I got a really solid joint because it was so awkward to clamp, so I went after and put in a couple of dowels to help strengthen that joint. The other portion of this latch is just like the first. It's an angled cut piece and it fastens to the rigid portion of the mount. It's got a T-nut pressed into the back and glued in place and that'll accept the knob from the front and that'll lock everything down and hold it in place. I could call this done, but I wanna add one more feature the dustiest cut you can make on a table saw is cutting off just the thickness of a blade off the edge of a piece like this. That spews dust all over the table and all over me. So I wanna add one more piece of polycarbonate to the side here that when I'm making a cut like this, I can drop this piece down and enclose that blade, hopefully allowing that dust to go up and out instead of all over the table and all over me. I already cut out the polycarbonate, but I need to add a couple of slots in here and also a couple of threaded rods in the housing. That way I can attach this piece to the housing and have it be adjustable depending on what thickness of piece I'm going to cut.
Now it's time for everybody's favorite part of a project. I finished painting and started to assemble the overarm and the linkages. And over here I'm working on the center section. I've already glued in the threaded studs. And next I'm going to outline the parts in silicone and then lay the polycarbonate down. And the silicone will keep dust out from in between the polycarbonate and the wood core. And then I can go ahead and put all the screws back in and the center section will be done. I want my shop back hose to fit inside the outlet on the center section, but obviously this is rectangular and this is round. So in order to make that work, I cut this piece of wood, which is the same size as this dust port minus the thickness of the dust hose. So I'm thinking I'll try to heat this hose up and then pound this block of wood in the end to try to form this into a square that will fit inside the port. Now that I've had some time to use this dust collector, there's a few things that I would change. The first thing I'm gonna change are these linkages. The linkages plus the bolts stick out about three quarters of an inch from the side of the shroud. These get in the way when I'm trying to cut a really narrow piece as my hand often hits this or even the push stick. If I would've made these out of aluminum, I could go quite a bit thinner, maybe an eighth of an inch, and then I could also use countersunk heads for the screws that way I would be able to get the fence and the push stick a little bit closer, allowing me to cut a little bit thinner pieces. If I were to build this again, I would leave out the whole siliconing portion of it. Instead, I would just leave this section unpainted and wood colored. Maybe go ahead and paint the red perimeter still, because that would look cool. But by leaving the center section unpainted, if dust did get between the polycarbonate and the wood core, you wouldn't see it because it's just wood colored and I feel like that would simplify the assembly and leaving out the silicone is always a good idea. If you want to build something similar, I'll leave a link to my website below where you can find the 3D CAD model I made of this and you can download that and make your own version. Thanks for checking out my video. I'll see you in the next project. But I want to add one more feature minus the thickness of this dust port, or dust hose, uh, dust hose.